China's 100 gigabit satellites beat SpaceX Starlink. The battle for satellite dominance in the new year heats up. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we're coming to the end of some fireside. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today's a technology day. We've been talking about SpaceX and China and China's new 100 gigabit satellites. But before we do, I have to say, Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year. It's the first or the second when you're watching this. Can't believe an entire year has gone by. We're in 2025. Absolutely amazing. This is going to be a good year, a really good year. I'm going to sit back with my popcorn. There's a lot going on in this year. So today we're gonna to be talking about the Chinese 100 gigabit laser connection between satellite and the ground that they're currently working on. That is working, but it's going to get faster and more reliable as time goes by. And it's also mobile. So 100 gigabits, but can be moved around like on a truck <laughs> without having a solid ground station someplace. So this is very, very interesting. And I talked to you guys about this probably about two years ago. I said, listen, to be able to get to a gigabit speed, Elon Musk really needs to be able to get communication between satellite and ground station faster. And a good way to do that is through lasers. So to have that laser communication, not only through satellites, forming this mesh network that I talk to you guys about all the time, but also from the satellite down to a ground station. That was my, let's say, thought process a couple of years back. Well, we see that the Chinese are now doing it. And I want to read to you an article. I got it over on MSNBC, like two or three different other sites. And what I did is I just boiled them down for you so you don't have to go and read everything and gave you kind of like a synopsis of what's going on. I think it's fascinating. And I do think that this is something that Elon Musk needs to think about. Um, I'll give you my commentary before the end of this video. But most importantly, I want to hear from you down below when we're done. What do you think about all this? And if you're a little bit shy, I get it, that's fine. Put a rocket ship, put a satellite, put a poop emoji, put anything down there so that I just know that you watch the video. I would really appreciate that. So before we get into the article, I wanna say that if you enjoy the video, throw it a thumbs up, that's very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, I appreciate that. Click this notification button over here so when I go live and when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And don't forget to share the video with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, Facebook, wherever. Share it with your community. Share the video and share the channel. Let's grow this thing in 2025. Also, if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out, they're free. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. And if you wanna just say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a thank you button right down here. Click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And finally, if you want more SpaceX Starlink goodness, well, I put together 390 videos just for you over the last 40 months or so. I'll put a link right here. Don't click on it yet. I'll put a link here. When you're done watching this video, check that out and you'll get helpful how to's, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, how to create mesh networks, all kinds of other stuff about SpaceX Starlink. So check those videos out. Anyways, let's jump right into this article. And like I said before, after I wanna hear from you down below. What do you think about all this? Starlink faces a strong new competitor. China has achieved a major milestone in satellite communication with a 100 gigabit laser data transmission from space to ground, 10 times faster than its previous record. Chang'ang Satellite Technology Corporation now directly competes with SpaceX Starlink, which uses lasers for intersatellite communication, but has yet to implement satellite technology for satellite to ground communication. Absolutely the case, that's what we were just talking about. Laser communication, a game changer. Starlink's success is driven by its microwave-based system, providing internet access to homes, vehicle, planes, and even boats. However, as demand for high-resolution data grows, microwave technology has bandwidth limits. While Starlink uses lasers for satellite-to-satellite -satellite communication, it still relies on microwaves for satellite-to-ground links. Chang'ang's laser approach bypasses these limitations, offering superior speed and efficiency. Mobility versus innovation. 
Starlink's ground systems are versatile, supporting both fixed and mobile platforms. However, Changgong introduced a mobile truck-mounted laser ground station that ensures stable communication by overcoming atmospheric disruptions. That's actually not the case. I'll talk to you about that in just a second. This mobility gives Changgong an edge for applications like disaster monitoring and real-time high-resolution imaging. The Space Race, NASA, Starlink, and Chang'an. NASA holds the record for laser communication with its T-Bird system, achieving 200 gigabits in 2023. However, T-Bird is stationary, limiting its scalability. Chang'an's 100 gigabit satellite to ground system, while slightly slower, half the speed, not slightly, half the speed, is mobile and designed for mass deployment. Starlink, for now, lags in satellite-to-ground laser communication despite its strong inter-satellite laser technology. That is true. Beyond connectivity, Chang'an's broader vision. Starlink focuses on providing global internet access while Chang'an is eyeing a wider range of applications. Its laser technology supports 6G networks, disaster response, national defense, and smart cities. By expanding satellite capabilities, Chang'an offers a broader vision unlike SpaceX Starlink's single-purpose focus. I think the 6G network is really important there. I'll get into that in just a second. Looking to the future. Chang'an's plan to expand its Jilian-1 satellite constellation to 300 satellites by 2027, all equipped with laser communication. Now that's communication between each other, but also laser communications to the ground. While Starlink has a larger satellite network, much larger, Chang'an's focus on laser technology could narrow the technological gap, making it a strong competitor. Setting new standards. China's 100 gigabit laser breakthrough isn't just about speed, it redefines satellite communication. While SpaceX Starlink excels in global coverage and mobility, it's limited by microwave-based ground communication, putting it behind the Chang'an's laser innovations. It's kind of true. With new speed benchmarks and broader applications, the satellite race is intensifying. A bold new era in communication. Starlink remains the leader in global connectivity and mobility, but Chang'an's revolutionary 100 gigabit laser system marks a dramatic shift in the satellite landscape. This leap into satellite-to-ground laser transmission challenges SpaceX's dominance and signals the dawn of a new era in satellite communication. I agree with this 100%. There's a couple of things that I find wrong here, and I'll get into that in just a second, but this is really important. This means that the Chinese are moving from that microwave connectivity between satellite and ground and ground to satellite to lasers. Now, what they're saying, how they were using a truck-based mounted system so that they could be mobile with it and move it around, that's where the bypassing of atmospheric conditions happens. It's not that lasers are actually better than microwaves cutting through those atmospheric conditions. It simply allows the ground station to move to an area that is not being affected by any type of atmospheric conditions, maybe snow snow or hail or severe rain. Because we know rain fade is a thing when we're talking about microwaves. That's just the way it is. SpaceX Starlink does have a good amount of rain fade, especially when it's really heavy, dense clouds, it's hard for it to cut through. But the bottom line is lasers are actually worse. And they don't talk about that in any of the articles. Lasers are more affected by those water droplets in the air than microwaves are, all right? So while lasers are better and they are definitely faster, they are not going to be better when it comes to severe weather. They don't say that. But that is the truth. Now, what exactly is the speed difference of what is currently on the ground with SpaceX Starlink and with this new laser-based connectivity that the Chinese have come up with? It's a lot, guys. It's a lot. One base station or ground station provides about 20 gigabits of speed, of connectivity. 20 gigabits of connectivity over the entire ground station to all of the satellites. Each satellite can receive approximately one gigabit to, let's say five gigabits. That's the maximum. 
Whereas this is not one, it's a hundred to that one satellite. So it's a lot. It is definitely much faster. Sometimes let's call it a hundred times faster if the weather permits. And the same thing holds true with microwaves. Weather does slow things down. So we're looking at a hundred gigabits in comparison to one to five gigabits per instance, let's call it. Not per ground station, but per instance, per satellite. Now, my personal opinion is that, like I said about two years ago, I think the best case here is having a laser-based system, but having something to fall back to, which would be microwave. So a hybrid system. So like I did a video just a couple of weeks ago about how I took this Raspberry Pi and put through it three ISPs, fiber, SpaceX Starlink, and T-Mobile Home Internet, all through here, and created a failover type of system. So if fiber went down, it would fail over to SpaceX Starlink. If Starlink went down, it would fail over to T-Mobile's network. And when fiber came back up, it would fall back to the fiber, so on and so forth, using all three. Now I could bond all three for greater speeds or I could just leave them as fail over and fall back the way I'm currently doing it because they're all fast enough. So the same thing holds true with SpaceX Starlink in my personal opinion. If they took one of these ground stations and instead of making them mobile where they're traveling around, just simply make them hybrids and then receive whichever signal is best. Receive both, but then defer to the fastest. So we know that the satellite internet connection using lasers is going to be much faster. Defer to that as primary and then secondary use microwave. That would just be perfect. The other way to do this would be, let's say if we were using lasers solely and not microwaves at all, but bounce from ground station to ground station. So for me, I have a ground station that is in Georgia, about 700 miles away. And then I have a ground station in Miami that's 70 miles away. That's a lot faster. So my pings here in Miami are about 15 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds with SpaceX Starlink. Whereas with Georgia at 700 miles away, they're more along the lines of 30 to 40 milliseconds. So it's a big difference. Now, what I think would be a good way to do it also is have all of these laser based, but then bounce ground stations using AI dynamically. Currently, they lock you into a ground station and that is it. But how about if the ground station here in Miami is getting hit with a hurricane or some severe storm? Just simply dynamically reroute me to a ground station in Georgia. That's it. Because the ground station in Georgia might have perfect weather, perfect connectivity and then bounce back, put me back dynamically to Miami once the weather has subsided. I think that would be the perfect way to do it. Once again, it would be a marrying of a hybrid of laser as well as microwave connectivity at the ground stations, but with AI also determining the best connection dynamically. And once again, moving us from ground station to ground station. I think that would be the best of all worlds. So. What say you? What do you think? This is just my ideas. I'm not a software engineer. I'm not a rocket scientist. I'm just some YouTube guy. <laughs> but what do you think about this? Down below, I want to hear from you. Once again, like I said before, if you don't want to put something down there because you're shy, just throw an emoji. I'm happy with that. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, throw it a thumbs up. That would be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're not, if you are, I appreciate that. And Tell your friends, family, like I said before, share the video, share the channel. That'd be very helpful. Finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years. Take a look at my merch, my tees, my shirts, my books, and everything else. If there's something there that interests you, pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, maybe through lasers. <laughs> And we'll see you in the next one. Love you guys. Once again, Happy New Year.